Hey guys, welcome back. This is Adventures with Dr. Joe. Today we're going to replace a digital keypad for a gun safe. This is a Fort Knox, Fort Knox safe. We're going to remove a Sergeant in Greenfield and replace it with a similar one, an SNG. And the reason for that is that these could be susceptible for electromagnetic pulse, EMP. If that should occur, nothing stops this. So this is a little faster, but this will never fail. So let's check it out. Here's my new best friend, Marty Smith. We're gonna change out today. We've taken the back cover off the Fort Knox safe, which was heavy, but pretty easy to do. Now we're gonna change out from an electronic to a combo lock to prevent any risk of a EMP or anything like that. So this is a Fort Knox safe. We've got a Fort Knox replacement. They're very nice at Fort Knox to get that for us from Utah. And we're installing it today. So we're taking off the rear plate and the, what is this part called? This is the lock body. A lock body is coming off. And there's the ribbon that went to the keypad in the front, which is right here that just pulled off. And then that was connected to a little, just this little spot right here. And it just pulled off. And there you go. So there we go. Now let's go. Here. Here we go. There's a base for mounting the keypad to the outside of the safe. Same 12 and 6 bolt pattern for the uh, for the new mechanical lock. So we just take the plastic backing plate off of the keypad lock and install the metal spy guard collar How made, nice for that the, looks. made for the dial. And it's a perfect fit. The screws line up just it's perfectly. A, well, the, if you look, the hole in the center is a little offset. We'll have to move oh, that around oh, just yeah. a little bit okay, to, to get it to fit. But it looks like there's a little play in these well, in these slots. There is. That's but nice. I'm really OCD about having this at 12 o'clock. Perfect. Me too. We'll do what we need to do to get that where we where we need it. So you're putting a grommet in there? Yeah, this actually needs to go in from the back. And one second, here we go. We're going to put the bushing in now, which is this part. It goes right in there. Nice. Have everything nice and smooth. Great. This looks like a good set we got from Fort Knox. It's supposed to be just a fit, but the risk of doing this yourself without an expert like Marty, oh, danger. If you set up a code that you really don't know, you're kind of in uh, in trouble. I will say this Fort Knox safe has been absolutely great. We've never had a problem with it. But I think this uh, mechanical fixture is going to make it so there's certainty with that. If you notice what I did was moved it over a little I to see the right that. to yep. sort of try to line up. And the reason why you have to do that, so it may be a little off center from here. I don't see it, but, but yeah. it's gonna be very hard to see. But what that's gonna do is the platform on the back that has the tapped threads for the body is gonna Perfect. determine where our spindle needs to be. So we need to line the face plate up with, with that hole. Yep. Great. And let's find that one up. That's locked. So it comes with a key also. Oh, look at that. That's our dial. Beautiful. Now you can see that what we're trying to eliminate, we want that flush. Yeah, exactly. Now, are you aware of what this ring is for? No. This is called a spy guard. So what happens is if somebody's staring over your shoulder, obviously it'll only give you a 20 number window. So if somebody's looking over here, if you didn't have the spy guard, and you're dialing your combo in, let's just say it stops on a 60, you know, they can look over here and see this 40 oh. and know that they're, you know, they're sort of play with numbers at that point. So what that's called is a spy guard that keeps people from staring over your shoulder. Perfect. Pretty cool feature. Step thing for me. What I like to do is go ahead and thread the body in, uh, get it molded in, tighten everything down before I cut the spindle and rotate the dial from the outside to make sure it's good and smooth. Perfect. That'll let us know if I bolt everything together and tighten the spindle in, 
if it's tight on the outside, that's telling me that I need to move that spy guard around a little bit. So we may be a couple times on and off just to get that proper. And this is an important feature. Can you explain that again? That's called a relocker. What the relocker does is there was a plate that went on the back of the lock that actually, when this is loaded, it'll be up here. This sits here and there's a little roll pin oh, I see it. that holds this plate on. What that's intended for is if somebody drills through the lock and knocks the back plate off of the lock, Boom. then it automatically relocks the relocker, or uh, locks the relocker. Safety, safety. Okay. Just another, uh, another safety feature. Okay, we've taken the cover off of the internal mechanism. And this is, this, these are the dial plates dial rings, some people call them. Now you have another relocker inside of here. Remember how we were talking about if somebody knocks that plate off, this is gonna be the new plate for our secondary relocker. Now when this is installed, if you look here, this is another relocker. If you notice that oh. spring loaded. When the bolt is extended, it'll allow this relocker to lock to go down into the bolt if the cover is off. So see what happens is when I put the cover on, it's gonna hold that just shy of, oh. of the bolt clearing. But so if anybody ever knocks this back cover off and the bolt is locked, it will lock Prevent that, this. Yeah. So this is your primary relocker. That is your secondary relocker. Cool. This is a standard commercial commercial dial. Keyway. So now we're going to attach this. Aren't these drills nice with their LED lights? Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you what. A little impact. It'll go just a little tighter and you can get it by hand. I use this thing every day. And we're just going to snug them up for the first time to see what our alignment is from the outside. Great. That looks pretty good right now. And this is a th this piece is threaded clearly. Okay, there we go. What do you call this part? They call it a fence and a gate. This is the fence and the gate. Okay. Which one is which? It's So we're going to thread that all the way on. I'm sure there's a if you notice, all three dials are lined up. Oh yeah, perfect. And it's and it's dropped down in. Yep. Okay, so what'll happen is when we set the safe up, if we wouldn't span it left and right, those numbers would stay the same and we should be able to dial in a one number combo to change it to your new code. But I like to spin the numbers around to make sure that I've got a, a, a smooth dial. And at that point, we may have to find what combo it goes to. And I'll describe that to you as we go. Good. All right, we've got that threaded on. And if I hold the steel and spin the dial from the outside, I'm looking for a smooth dial on the outside. And what's gonna happen is without me putting the key in there, I'm not rotating any of the dials yet, so I haven't changed any numbers. Right. So what that's doing is telling me that the the spy guard on the outside is set up proper, that we can move forward with Good. it. So, so we've got it really nice, nicely lined nice, up. Nice, smooth, that means everything's lined up because that spy guard is adjustable left to right and a fraction up and down uh, on the outside. And if you get that off and you thread this in, what this is doing is straightening up the, the dial on the outside. If the ring is off at that point, it'll bind the rotation of the dial up against the ring. So right now we're smooth. I'm going to take it back. We want to, uh, and I'll show you what we're going to do. So we're now we're going to actually cut off this entire length. We get set because this is going to be set up for much thicker doors, but, but we don't need this. We don't want that. So we'll end up marking it and cutting that right, off. Because you got to put the cover back on. Got so it. it has to be on there. That thread is just, it's I really mean, it's, fine. It's a super, super fine thread. There we go. We're cutting those threads as we spin it out. Smooth as silk. Nice. And the 
they'll start start back a whole lot perfect. Quicker. Perfect. A whole lot nicer. So we've cut the rod off, used a, a Dremel type tool. Now Marty's threading this baby back on just to be sure that it's quick tip. Really thread good. thread this on first, thread it all the way down before you cut your rod. That way when you remove this, it will clean up the threads after you've I do run a hand file over it though. But now you can just unthread it and clean the threads up. It makes sense. Yeah. Gonna put a little lithium grease on this for a lubricant. Just a little bit. Great. Put your dial back in. Oh, smooth. Start right here. Now what you'll have to do on these, you'll have to move the hammer back just a little bit to get this down. All the way down, yeah. And what I usually do is just go ahead and set it flat and start threading my dial in. So you're turning it from the outside. Turning it from the outside. And you'll see I cut it just a little or so it'll extend just a little past uh -huh. it. That way it gives me a little bit of room if I ever need to do any adjustments there. Perfect. So what I'm doing is just spinning it till it's tight and I'll back off a quarter. And we'll stick the pin in, the cotter pin in, or the key in uh, just slightly so we can check the dial rotation. Shut the safe all the way. There we go. So what we're doing now is we're trying not to, now we've locked our bolt. Our relocker is ready to go. So you can see how now the relocker works. Yes. So the cover, the back cover is what holds that relocker in. Yeah. So we're gonna have to put the, uh, what we're gonna do is find our combo first. And then we'll put our cover back on, set up our secondary relocker, and then we'll dial in the new combo. I'm gonna go ahead and tap our key in all the way. Just flush to the mm -hmm. back of the spindle. Don't beat it up. And we are ready for our plate. Now they've changed. This is the new plate that come with the yep. mechanical lock. This is the old plate, but you'll see our bolt location for our they line up. relocker are perfect. Nice. Here goes the new plate. Uh, relocker hole lined up, put it in there. Okay, yep, plate on the back. Plate screw holes line up. Start those babies in there. They look like they're stainless steel machine screws. And here we go. It's nice. Beautiful. Voila. Beautiful. Be lined up. That should be good. So now he's checking the number. Oh, I know what I did. I looked at this number. Ah, I got it. So it's okay. 19, not it's 8. Yeah, okay. Let's make sure that it's a little off. Let's go back to 17. Let's do an 18. Whatever we're at right there. So we're going to use eleven on our first. Okay. Or no, I'm sorry, 16. Yep, 16. Well, that changed it there. Let's go to a 15. Not quite, you're not quite there. Okay. Okay, so yeah, well, I wanted to do a 15 this time. So 15 seems to be working. Okay. Okay. So Great. What do, back cover back on. And the reason we want that back cover back on is because we want that relocker up. Oh, yeah. And that also gives us our change 
key oh, slot. Oh, okay. This is the change key slot for the tool that they give us. I get it. Let's look at that tool right now. So this is the fancy tool that allowed us to change that our is, combo. That is an S and G change tool. Beautiful. As 12 o'clock on your, on your main indicator to make sure that the dial's working. That's going to tell me that the combo is set actually at 15. Then we'll dial it in to our secondary point at your change. Yep, indicator. I see that indicator. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to turn, we know we're locked. We're going to turn four times. We're going to go to our 15. We're going to see if it locks the. There we go. Okay, so we know our 15 is the combo now. Do you ever leave it at one number? Uh, yeah, I've actually done a one number. <laughs> if you're, uh, for people that are trying to get a, matter of fact, mine at home set up on a single number. Interesting. And just simply for a, a speed of getting in. Yeah. Uh, you could do it. Uh, obviously your security's gone. Right. You know, so that's, uh, Okay, so now what we're going to do, just, just to start from scratch, we're going to go to the zero. We're going to do four rotations. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to go to our 15, but on our change sleeve. Right there. So now we're dialed in 15 there. The magic key. Our tool should go right in. There's all the way in, and you're going to turn a quarter turn. Wow. What that's done is that's unlocked all three wheel packs. They're in a clutch mode right now, and then now we can dial in our new combo. And our okay, new combo. we're setting our new combo, and tell me what you're doing with the key back here. Okay. I'm just holding the key so it doesn't slip. Perfect. While we're hold, while we're dialing in our and combo. we're dialing in our combo, we're not going to look at it, but no. we're going to dial that in. Now you missed this. No, but let, let, yeah. Block your numbers. Okay. When we want to open it up, we use this color, th this spot. But when we want to change that, we're using this spot, the one that's here more at. Is that eleven o'clock? That's eleven o'clock. Okay, perfect. So we've set our key, our number. Now we're going to turn this back. Turn this back one quarter turn. Remove take the it tool. out. Nice. Now Okay guys, well thank you very much. This was a successful change, putting in a mechanical combination lock for a digital lock, uh, for safety, for security, uh, something that'll always work for us. So as, as usual, thank you very much for watching. Please click subscribe, like, and comment. And as always, stay safe. Thank you.